Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that if you have an image that you want to replace the sky in, you could easily do so in Photoshop with just a few clicks. Unfortunately, Photoshop won't automatically add a reflection. So if you have a scene that you want to replace the sky in, and that scene has water, Photoshop won't automatically add a reflection of that sky into the water. In my course, Photoshop Unleashed, I demonstrate how to do this. And in today's YouTube video, I'm going to show you how to do it. If you are interested in learning more about Photoshop, consider my course, Photoshop Unleashed. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video, and I'll have a discount code so you could save some money if you choose to purchase it. Now, how do you replace the sky and add a reflection into Photoshop? You can see I have Photoshop open. I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side. I'm just going to click open. And on my desktop, I have a RAW file. And in my course, you get all the RAW files I use in all the videos so you can work along at home. And this is one of the RAW files that you will get. When you open a RAW file up into Photoshop, it will automatically open up into Camera Raw. You could do some editing here if you want, but I'm not going to do any editing to this image. I'm just going to go over to the lower right and click open. And when you do that, it will open up the image into Photoshop. Now, step one, after you have the image opened up into Photoshop, is to duplicate the background layer. To do that, hit Command-J on a Mac, Control-J on a PC. Once you have it duplicated, turn that duplicated layer off. Then click on the background layer so you're making that the active layer. Now we're going to replace the sky. To do that, go up to Edit, then down to Sky Replacement. And you'll see that the Sky Replacement dialog will appear, and it will automatically use the last sky you happen to use. Now, the important thing to keep in mind when you're replacing the sky is you want the lighting to match. In the original image, it looks like it was lit pretty much straight on. Maybe the sun was a bit to camera left because you could see some of the shadows are just going off to the right a little bit. As far as this specific sky is concerned, it looks like the sun was further left than the actual scene. So this sky doesn't really match. So I'm going to use a different sky. I'm going to go to this drop down. And you see that I have a group that I called Morganti Skies. These are the skies that you will actually get if you purchase my course. There's a number of different skies here. Uh, you may know that usually when I do videos on sky replacement, I use OcuDrone skies because those really are the best third-party skies on the market. As a matter of fact, they just released a new pack of skies that look fantastic, and I'll be doing a video on those skies in the very near future. But for this video, I am going to use one of my skies. As a matter of fact, the exact sky that I use in my course. And again, you get all these skies with the course. Uh, so let me find the sky I want to use. I want to use this one. It's kind of a simple sky, but it is a sky that I think you could easily see how the reflection will work in the water because it has these contrails going off. So we have this sky. You could see just clicking on it, it replaces it. Now you do have some adjustments. You could shift the edge and fade the edge. This will be all like around the buildings or the edge of the um, the actual sky and the original image. And you can see if I shift the edge, what it will do, it takes a second to kick in. It's kind of pushing the sky up kind of over the buildings. If I go the other way, it kind of pushes the original image back up. And the default position was zero. If I fade the edge, you can see what it does there. It kind of just makes the original sky darker. If I go to the left, it makes it lighter. And 50 was the uh, default position. Then as far as the sky itself, I could make it brighter or darker. And I think the default position was fine. I could make it warmer or cooler. I think the default position again was fine. It just kind of worked well. Now scale, if you want to zoom it in, move this to the right, and it'll take a second to kick in, but you'll see it will zoom in. Um, you could zoom it out, but I'm not sure why anyone would ever want to do that because it won't fit the image anymore. The default here for the scale was 100, so just put it back at 100. Um, if you have a sky and the lighting is opposite of what you need, you could flip it horizontally so it will fit the image better. In this case, it fit the way it was. Then 
As far as the foreground adjustments, the lighting mode, you have multiply and screen. You can see the difference. Just try it and see which one looks better to you. I'll stay with the multiply. You can mess with foreground lighting, edge lighting, color adjustment. Everything looks good just out of the box with this guy. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. And by the way, if you don't see these adjustments happening as you move sliders, make sure the preview checkbox is turned on. Then you're going to want to output it to a duplicate layer. This is very important. So you have the option of new layers, duplicate layer. Make sure you use duplicate layer and click OK. And once you do that, you'll notice now we have three layers and that middle layer is the sky replacement layer. Now, next step, go up to your top layer, click on it and turn it on. So it is now the active layer. And because it's the active layer and it's on top of the other layers, it just covers everything up. What we need to do, though, is flip this upside down. To do that, we need to go in what is called free transform mode. The keyboard shortcut is Command or Control T. Obviously, Command T if you have a Mac, Control T if you have a PC. And when you do, you have these handles. You don't have to touch any handle. Just right-click right in the middle of the image and then go down to flip vertical. Once you do that, you'll have an upside down image. Then go up here and click this little check mark to commit to that transformation. Now, we're going to replace the sky again. So do that, go up to edit, and then down to sky replacement. Now Photoshop's going to think the water is the sky, so it's going to put the last sky we used, which happens to be the good one, the one we want to use, and it's going to put it in the water. And it's been my experience, you don't have to move anything. Just let everything be the default, what it is. Make sure you output to a duplicate layer again, that is important, and click OK. Now we have this upside down image with the sky in the water, but the water's at the top. Now we have this uh, image here. This is layer one. Remember we duplicated that? That We don't need it. So just take it and throw it in the garbage. So that we have three layers again. Uh, we have the original background layer. Then on top of that, we have the layer with the actual sky replacement. And then on top of that, we have the upside down layer that has the sky in the water. Now, what we want to do is make that the active layer, so click on that. And what we need to do is get a selection of, quote, the sky. It's actually the water we're selecting, but Photoshop's thinking this is the sky. So we need to make a selection of that. To do that, go up to Select, and then down to Select Sky. It will take a second, but then you'll see marching ants around, again, quote, the sky. It's really around the water, but Photoshop thinks it's the sky. You don't have to modify this selection at all. It usually will do a fine job. And what we want to do is add a layer mask to it. When you add a layer mask to a layer that has a selection, what it will do is it will mask out everything that isn't selected and it will keep in everything that is selected. So when I add a layer mask to this, it's going to mask out on this layer everything below basically the marching ants. So we'll go down here and we'll click on the layer mask. And now you can see it looks really odd, doesn't it? Well, that's okay. What we're going to do now is flip this back around. So to do that, just go click on it so you're on the actual layer. Go to free transform mode again by hitting Command or Control T. Then again, right click right in the middle and go down to flip vertical. And now you see we have an image that has a sky at the top and that sky is reflected at the bottom, but it really doesn't look right yet. It's because it's just too strong, and most often it is. It's going to be too strong looking. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you're clicked on the actual layer. Make sure you're not clicked on the layer mask. Make sure you're clicked on the actual layer. And then go up to this opacity. You could click this little drop down here to get a slider, or what I like to do is just to hover over the word opacity, and you'll see the cursor changes, changes into that little hand. That little hand is called a scrubby slider. And with it, you could just left-click, and then drag to the left to reduce the opacity and just reduce it till it looks like it belongs. And it looks pretty good right there. Now there's one other optional thing you could do to make it look a little better is go to the blend mode that's this drop down right here. By default, it will be normal and try either lighten or screen. And sometimes those make it look a little better. And I think actually screen might look a little better than normal. So you have three options, normal, lighten, or screen. I think screen looks a little better. So we'll go with that. And there it is. There is our image where I replace the sky and I add the reflection. And again, I do this exact same thing in my Photoshop course, Photoshop Unleashed, with the same exact images. And you get all these images with the course. You get a lot of extra skies as well. 
And again, in the description below this video, I have a link to my website and the course and the discount code so you could save some money. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.